Hosnia Khan from Toronto. She's the Security Compliance Director at Monk School of Global Affairs and uh, at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. Great to have you. First, I want to establish, after 75 years, how effective do you think the United Nations has been as an organization? It's quite complex. You can see with at least security issues, there's a lot of contention because you have a United Nations Security Council that have their own politics and agendas in place in regions with global crisis. For example, Russia and Ukraine or China in the South China Sea. When it comes to more globalist agendas, when it comes to General Assembly at least, there's a bit more progress. So for example, with the COVID-19 pandemic, the UN was quick to put up a response fund for it. Um, and in terms of giving a platform for smaller minorities and groups like the Rohingya, that's where the UN really shines. Right, you know, uh, you brought up the UN Security Council and many say, uh, that's a primary problem with the United Nations, that many of its most powerful institutions like the UNSC are just, they're really outdated and actually counterproductive. And the problem they say with the United Nations is that it is unable to reform. There are too many entrenched and too few power brokers that will not let things change for the, really the betterment of the planet. Would you agree that that's a problem in the organization? It definitely is. And Truly, the underlying problem is the bureaucracy in place. They're unable to be nimble. There's too many policies in place that really affect that. Um, but most of all, it's the agendas that are in place by the most super powers of the, nation, of, of the world. So, yes. I mean, give us an example that has bothered you when you saw something that should have been easy to identify, address, and fix that was just derailed because of the structures? I think when it comes to the UN, when you look at the crisis in Libya, for example, you have multiple UN actors in play. And instead of negotiations and peace coming into play, you see the escalation of conflict. And that's really where you see the UN fail when it comes to security issues such as that. Okay, I mean, the, and you, you mentioned some of the positive points of the UN. What, what do you think has been, you know, the biggest success? I would say the ability for it to be a forum to promote human rights and democracy. And with that, without it, it you really don't have anything else. And unfortunately, international organizations like the UN, NATO, G7, and G20 have been criticized. Their bodies have been criticized such as the WHO, um, but there is hope for the future. You really just need member states to come together and really prioritize uh, global cooperation more than anything, which is easier said than done. Right, I wanted to ask you uh, finally then about one of its fundamental institutions, and that is that of the United Nations peacekeeping forces. Uh, now they mm. go to regions that are really in desperate need of some kind of stability and law and order. Those troops are supposed to provide that. Yet so often they've come under fire uh, for actually bringing everything from abuse to disease. In the case of Haiti, that you know, a massive cholera outbreak was started. Um, how do you improve the use of UN peacekeepers? Because they really are the last option for many places. And we seem to see too many soldiers that aren't dedicated to the mission. It's hard. It's complex, and it's it's been a part of the organization for years, since its inception, truly. Uh, there has to be more reforms made when it comes to the laws in place to uh, ensure compliance, especially when it comes to soldiers. Uh, and that comes with time, and it's not an easy fix. Okay, Tasnia Khan, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us from Toronto.